Hello, welcome to this talk about preparing for the Physics Aptitude Test or the PAT. My name is Dr Jenny Barnes and I'm a college tutor and I'm also the manager of the Physics Teaching Laboratories. So the outline of this talk is that I'm going to give you some general comments, a bit about the format of the PAT um, and then how to prepare for the PAT, some suggestions um, from our current students. This includes things like looking at past papers and the syllabus. And then I'll move on to what are we looking for? What, what is the point of the PAT and what are we using it for? I'll then also mention some other resources outside of what we have on our website, which you might find helpful um, and conclude. So some general comments about um, the PAT is that if you apply to Oxford for physics, physics and philosophy, material science or engineering, you must take the PAT. The PAT is hard and less than 1% of students get between 90 and 100. And I'm sure that you're a very able student who's always been getting between 90 and 100. But the PAT isn't that sort of exam. If everybody got 90%, it really wouldn't be much use to us. We need to spread out what is a very able cohort. So that's why it is hard. So please don't be discouraged. If you see hard questions, there are going to be questions that maybe you can't answer all of it or you can't um, you know, answer it initially. But you do need to develop a strategy on how you're going to tackle the paper. So are you going to try some questions first and then come back to others later? Are you going to start question one and just work your way through? That's the important thing. The important thing is to try as many of the questions as possible. Um, and one of the things that I'll mention is about timing. So the format of the PAT at the moment is that it's two hours long. It's a mixture of maths and physics. There's 50 marks for each. And the rubric, the kind of layout of the paper, um, it has changed over the last few years. So if you look at previous past papers, you know, from sort of 2015, 2016, um, 2012, they, the paper may look slightly different to how it looks now. At the moment, we have 12 multiple choice questions. Each of the questions are worth two marks and there'll be six on maths and six on physics, but they'll all be mixed up, okay? There'll then be um, a selection of higher mark questions on physics and maths. This will be between um, three and 10 marks. Um, and um, all the questions, including the multiple choice, are mixed up because it used to be that you had all the maths questions, then you had all the physics questions, and people would kind of do really well on the maths, they would do all the maths questions, and they didn't actually get onto the physics questions. And this was a bit of a problem because um, we actually wanted people to do physics. That was the important thing. So how do you prepare for the PAT? Well, we have some top tips from current students, because um, we asked their current students in physics, engineering, and uh, material science, we said, how did you prepare for the PAT? And they said the most useful thing was to do some past papers. Um, so to look at the past papers and to actually try and do some of them. The other thing was to check the syllabus so that you know that you've covered all of the topics that we might ask questions on. Um, doing some other problem solving type questions. This might be Physics Olympiad or Isaac Physics, something which isn't just an A-level question. That's important. And then do some questions under timed conditions because the hardest parts of the test the students who replied to us said was the timing to actually do all of the paper in two hours. That was really hard. And also the style of the questions. It was often different to A-level. So you do need to do some things from other places other than just doing A-level questions or out of an A-level textbook. Now, of the students who replied to us, about 35% said they did all the preparation themselves. Um, with no help from a teacher, okay? Um, so it wasn't true that, you know, everybody has some, you know, PAT preparation club. Only 25% had some regular PAT preparation club in their school. So a lot of people, they just asked a question, you know, one or two questions to a teacher, or they just did it all on their own. So if you are the only person in your school preparing for this, this isn't a problem. You can do it. Um, you just need to sort of follow some of the tips that we're, we're giving in this video. So on our website, um, if you go to study um, and then um, about the undergraduate courses and how to apply, you get to this page which talks about the physics aptitude test. Um, and 
there's various sort of then submenus and things off this. Um, so this gives just the general information about what the date is, when you have to apply by, and that the course itself, the sorry, the test itself is administered by Cambridge Assessment Admissions Testing, um, not just UCAS. OK, so you have to register, put your UCAS form in, but you also do have to register specifically and your school has to register you for the PAT. In terms of past papers, so one of the tabs um, says past papers, and these are available on our website, and there's past papers for about the last 10 or 15 years, okay? Um, underneath this, there are also what's called the Physics Admissions Report, the PAT reports, and the reports for every year, um, they give you an idea of what was the mark needed to achieve an interview in physics. Um, so a lot of what I'm talking about here is physics, um, material science and engineering. They use the PAT in a slightly different way. They combine it with what you've written on your UCAS form because those subjects, um, they want to make sure you do understand what material science or engineering is, um, whereas we kind of hope that you understand what physics is. Um, and these reports that, that we publish on our site are tell you if you were applying for physics, what was the mark you needed to achieve that year? And the mark that we pick um, keeps the number that we interview constant. So we can only interview about 500 people. And last year we had about 1,800 people apply. So we choose a mark so that we interview a sort of set number of people. That's the important thing, okay? There isn't really a pass mark that you've got to achieve every year. It depends on how easy or how hard the paper is. So for the 2020 paper, um, the average was 49.1 plus or minus 15.9 and last year the PAT score we combined with something called the contextualized GCSE score and this gives us something we called an R score and everyone with an R score of greater than 66.9 was automatically offered an interview and there were a further 59 people who had a slightly lower R score um, but were also automatically um, offered an interview. Um, and this is for physics and for physics and philosophy. Now, there were another 83 people who achieved below the automatic level, but they were also invited for interview. And that kept the total to around 500, as I say. Now, this information, I don't know because I work in the physics department. I know it because it's in the report. OK, so do have a look at the reports. They do give you useful information about, you know, what was the sort of number that you needed to achieve that year. In terms of past papers, we only have a couple of sets of solution on our website. So this is for 2009 and 2010. Now, solutions do exist on the Internet. If you type in, you know, solutions to Oxford Pat, I'm sure you will find solutions. You should not have to pay for these solutions, by the way. Um, I know there are people out there making money out of this, but there are solutions out there for free. Note, however, they are not our solutions, OK? And the reason we don't tend to give out solutions is because if you answer the question correctly by any method, you will get the marks. Um, the people who mark the paper are engineers and material scientists and physicists, and they understand what the what, you know, different methods exist um, and what a valid method might be. OK, so don't feel that there's only one way to do the question. There could be a number. Right. And this is why it's really, really important to write down your working, because this could earn you some marks. And I'm sure your teachers have always told you to write down your working. Really, really important for us. The syllabus, we try to cover first year maths and first year physics A level. Um, do look at it. Do do some preparation over the summer, though, because um, different schools and different exam boards, they do things in different orders. So it might be that you haven't covered some of the topics now, but you might cover them in September. So please do ask your teachers, um, because it may well be that you will have covered it by the 30th of October, um, or by a suitable date, you know, just before the um, exam. Um, there is no formula sheet. We do expect you to know some of the basics, um, you know, equations for potential in a spring or for kinetic energy of a car, that sort of thing. Um, we allow non-graphical calculators, but please do check the specifications on our website because, for instance, the Classwiz FX991EX is not allowed because it does things like solve simultaneous equations and find inequality solutions and things. And we would like to see you do that. We would like to see you actually um, work through those sorts of problems and not just have an advantage that your calculator might do it. Okay. 
The syllabus, um, here's a couple of excerpts. So there is syllabus for the maths content and syllabus for the physics content. Um, a couple of years ago, we in expanded the syllabus to try and make it more specific. Um, we didn't add anything to it, um, but we did perhaps where it said in the past knowledge of the solar system. We've expanded that to knowledge of the solar system. Um, and we expect you to know the names of the planets. We expect you to know what a comet or an asteroid or a moon is. But we don't expect you to know what a Jovian day is um, or, you know, how many rings there are on Saturn or any, you know, the, the sort of specifics of, um, you know, what gravity is on Venus. That's not important. But we do expect you to know that there are planets and they do come in a certain order. And Venus is closer to the sun than us and that sort of thing. OK, so that's what I mean by we expanded it recently, but it's not, um, you know, it, it didn't actually get any longer. In terms of the calculators, again, these are excerpts. Please do check them so they tell you what it can and cannot do and make sure that you are using a calculator, which, you know, doesn't do things it's not supposed to. So what are we looking for? We're looking for can you do the basics? Um, can you think about the answer you've got? Can you use new information we give you within a question? Um, and these are all key skills that we need you to have when you come on the course, because if you can't do the basics of maths, if you can't kind of think whether the answer you've got is sensible or out by three orders of magnitude, um, if you can't pick stuff up and run with it really quickly, then you're going to struggle. And you're going to find the course really hard. Also, can you express a question in terms of mathematical expressions? That's really important. And there is a second video where I'll go through um, how to solve a few past paper questions. Some other resources which might be useful for the PAT, the British Physics Olympiad, they have lots of questions that are, are sort of slightly more challenging than A-level. They also have a very nice question bank with solutions um, to sort of, you know, show you how to solve some of these slightly more challenging questions. There's I want to study engineering, which is also um, you don't have to want to study engineering. It has some very nice questions on it as well. Um, so again, it's the right sort of level. There's also Isaac Physics, um, and this was a website specifically designed to improve problem solving. And I had a look through the um, website a couple of years ago, and I came up with a, a list of 10 questions of which five are maths and five are physics and there's a QR code that you could scan in and that will give you the list of these questions. Um, they're the sort of questions that I can imagine could almost have been on the pat but there are many other questions on Isaac physics that might be useful not just these ones. So to conclude to prepare for the pat you need to practice with past papers you need to check the syllabus Think about using some other resources, things like Isaac Physics and the British Physics Olympiad, but don't expect to get it all right, but do make sure you get to the end. Thank you very much.